It begins with a continent that was once twice as large as it is today, a landmass called Sahul, a fusion of Australia, New Guinea, and Tasmania, floating at the edge of the ancient world. And on this vast land, tens of thousands of years before the pyramids rose, before the first stone temples were carved in Turkey, before Europe even had cave painters, humans were already here, lighting fires, making tools, telling stories, singing the first lines of what would become the world's longest continuous cultural tradition. The mystery is not that Australia's first peoples are old. The mystery is how old and how early they arrived across distances no human had ever crossed before. For more than a century, researchers believe the settlements of Australia happened about 10,000 years before the ice melted. Then the dates were pushed to 30,000, then 40,000. And every time scientists thought they had reached a limit, new evidence emerged, older and older, pushing human presence deeper into time until the numbers became almost unbelievable. This is the story of how archaeology, genetics, and geology are rewriting the origins of humanity's first great oceanic journey, and revealing that the earliest evidence of people in Australia is not only ancient, but among the oldest stories of our entire species. The tale begins in a time when world maps had different outlines. Sea levels were 75 meters lower. Australia was not an island, but part of a supercontinent whose northern edge touched the vast stretches of Southeast Asia. But even with land bridges, one thing remained. Open ocean. No matter where ancient humans stood, they still face at least 90 to 100 kilometers of deep water. And yet, somehow, they crossed it. This is one of humanity's first great unsolved puzzles. Long before the invention of metal, before agriculture, before cities, people built boats. Not rafts of desperation, but watercraft capable of planned, repeated voyages. Archaeologists today argue that this was not an accident. You do not accidentally populate a continent. The oldest widespread evidence once came from places like Lake Mungo, a dry lake bed at the western edge of New South Wales. Here, archaeologists uncovered human remains, Mungo Man and Mungo Lady, dated to about 40,000 to 42,000 years ago. For decades, these were the icons of Australia's deep human past. But this was only the beginning. As new dating technologies emerged, the timeline shifted again. To the north, on the rugged escarpments of Arnhem Land, lies the site of Majadebe. Beneath layers of rock and soil, archaeologists found stone tools, grinding stones, ochre pigments, and plant remains, with dates pushing back to 65,000 years ago. Suddenly, Australia was not just old. It was one of the earliest places on Earth to host Homo sapiens outside Africa. And that changed everything. Around the world, models of human migration were rewritten overnight. The map of the ancient world changed shape. If Australia was settled by 65,000 years ago, then the movement of humans across Asia must have begun far earlier than once thought. The piece of the puzzle that had always seemed extreme, crossing vast stretches of water, was no longer unbelievable. It was inevitable. The story of how humans reached Australia became a story of what humans were already capable of. Planning, collaboration, navigational intelligence, long-distance voyaging, cultural memory strong enough to carry knowledge across generations. Before we continue, this is the truth we uncover every day on Genealogy X, where history meets DNA. Subscribe to uncover the mysteries hidden in your own bloodline. There is a twist in the archaeological record that few expected. For decades, researchers assumed Australia's early population was small and fragile, surviving in isolated pockets. Yet the evidence suggests the opposite. By 50 to 60,000 years ago, Humans had already spread across the entire continent, from the tropical north to the deserts of the interior, from river valleys to coastal plains, people were everywhere. This rapid expansion implies something remarkable, a large founding population, not a handful of wanderers. Models based on early genetic data suggest perhaps several thousand people arrived in the first waves, not two or three families. This rewrites old theories of isolated drift. Instead, it points to a coordinated migration, part of a broader wave of dispersal across Asia. 
But archaeology wasn't finished rewriting the story. In recent years, scientists discovered even older stone tools in the Kimberley region, some possibly older than 70,000 years ago. And on the island of Timor, halfway between Southeast Asia and ancient Sahul, researchers found evidence of long-distance fishing and seafaring technologies that predate Australia's earliest settlements. Humans were already moving across open water with confidence. The people who reached Australia may have been among the world's earliest navigators, hundreds of centuries before the Polynesians and long before the Mediterranean had sailors. For many years, scientists believed Australia was settled in a single wave, but genetic research from 2016 onward, studies analyzing both ancient and modern aboriginal genomes, revealed something far more complex. The first groups that arrived did not remain clustered together. Instead, they spread rapidly, splitting into separate populations extremely early. The genetic divergence between aboriginal groups today traces back more than 50,000 years, making them some of the oldest distinct cultures on Earth. And among these findings came a revelation. Aboriginal Australians share an early ancestry with populations in New Guinea and parts of island Southeast Asia, but they form their own branch, one that has remained largely separate since the Ice Age. This ancient divergence is older than the split between Native Americans and East Asians, older than the separation of Europeans and Asians, older than the ancestry divisions within Africa among many groups. It is a genetic time capsule, not frozen, but continuous, unbroken, and deeply rooted. Another clue came from Denisovan DNA. Aboriginal Australians carry among the highest proportions of Denisovan ancestry in the world, inherited from encounters tens of thousands of years earlier in Southeast Asia. But here is where the science surprised even experts. This Denisovan ancestry seems to come from a different Denisovan population than the one that contributed genes to Tibetans or some Philippine populations. There may be multiple Denisovan groups and Australia's ancestors interacted with a lineage unknown elsewhere. When sea levels rose after the last ice age, the Great Sahul Continent broke apart. Tasmania separated around 12,000 years ago. New Guinea detached slightly earlier. And yet through all this, the cultural and genetic lineages in Australia remain staggeringly continuous. Archaeology shows rock art traditions lasting tens of thousands of years. Songlines, oral maps encoded in narrative, describe landscapes that have not existed since the Ice Age yet the story survived unchanged. While civilizations elsewhere rose and fell, Australia's first peoples maintain one of the oldest continuous cultural systems on the planet. And then comes one of the most astonishing discoveries. Buried deep beneath the desert sand, in places like the Nullabar Plain and other arid regions, researchers have recovered ancient Aboriginal hair samples preserved from the 20th century, providing a unique genetic snapshot before European contact. These samples show no evidence of major population replacement for over 50,000 years. In a world shaped by migration and mixing, Australia stands almost alone. A story of arrival followed by extraordinary continuity. Even the landscape itself holds memories. In northern Australia, volcanic eruptions from more than 7,000 years ago appear in oral traditions describing the birth of new mountains. Coastal peoples tell stories of shorelines that once lay dozens of kilometers inland, stories that match underwater archaeological sites found by modern researchers. The memories survive not in writing, but in narrative, unbroken across generations. Australia's first peoples are not simply among the earliest navigators or earliest settlers of a new continent. Their arrival marks one of humanity's first great experiments in exploration a chapter of our species' story that has endured nearly unchanged since the Ice Age. And yet, with all this knowledge, mysteries remain. Which routes did ancient people take across the ocean? How many voyages were made? How did they navigate? What technologies did they use? And how much older could the archaeological record become? Scientists now suspect that even the dates we have, 65,000 in Majadebe, may not be the final number. New underwater sites may push the timeline even deeper. If humans were capable of crossing such vast oceans so early in our history, what other chapters of human exploration might still be missing from the story? If you've enjoyed exploring how DNA overturns the myths of history, subscribe to Genealogy X, 
we reveal one mystery every day that show who we really are.